What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another top 5 video for you and this time we're taking a look at the top 5 best farming spots for legendary and anointed gear in the game. These are my personal picks for farming spots but as always I'd love to know what your favorites are too so be sure to leave a comment down below after the video. With that out of the way let's jump into the list. Let's get started already! Number 5! Coming in at number 5 is Gigamind. Now this boss is one of the first few bosses in the game that you get to fight. He has a dedicated legendary loot pool consisting of the red card shield, the hellshock handgun, and a specific drop of the smart gun XXL, which means that only he can drop that item. But he's also very generous in dropping a lot of other legendary loot. I've gotten numerous class mods, and oddly enough, I've gotten several Lyuta sniper rifles from him. He's a fast farm as well. The route to him is about a 10 second drop from spawn and then once you kill him and save and quit and reload you will spawn right at the bottom of the steps to his arena ideally you should bring a good shock and fire elemental weapon to rip his shields and then take down his health his crit spot like other nogs is in the middle of his back if you can consistently hit that then something like the maggie or the lucky seven should wipe him fast as well as an added bonus there is a red chest to the left of him that is accessible after defeating him okay here Coming in at number 4 is Captain Tron. Now in addition to being part of the funniest family of villains in the Borderlands universe, Captain Tron is a notoriously easy fight. A shock weapon will decimate his shield, and then his health bar is easy to wipe with a fire elemental weapon after that. Like all heavyweight style enemies, he has a pack on his back that serves as his critical hit spot, allowing you to do increased damage. Now just like Gigamind, if you have a good Maggie, then hitting this will do serious work on him. On Mayhem 4, Trant can drop a sniper called the Tank Man Shield, which honestly just doesn't feel like it's worth it to me, but he also has the Firestorm Grenade mod and Devoted SMG in his loot pool. Now, none of those drops really tickle my fancy, but he does regularly drop a lot more loot randomly. Plus, he has a rare item chest and two standard chests in the room behind him after you defeat him. And immediately under the spot where you drop into his arena, there are two more standard chests. And I have pulled a legendary item out of all five of these chests before. The initial run to his arena does take a few minutes, but once you're there, you will respawn just outside of his arena every time. And there is an ammo machine to the left of the entrance that you can use to sell all the junk that you've gotten while farming him. Coming in at number three, Grave Word. Now, I know there's gonna be some people out there who are confused about why this one isn't number one, but you're gonna see why here in a minute. Grave Word is an easy fight for sure, and if you have the right gear and build, you can kill him in seconds. His dedicated legendary loot pool consists of the Grave, the Ward, Moxie's Endowment, and the Lob. And honestly, those are some of the worst items in dedicated loot pools for this entire list of farms, right up there with Trance. But where Grave Word makes up for it is with all of his random loot that you can get. Now, I've seen people post pictures of upwards of eight or nine legendary items at once from him. Additionally, there is a chest room through the vault warp behind him after defeating him, but that's usually not worth the amount of time that you're going to use to warp in there, loot the room, and then save and quit, because in that time, you could probably load it back in and kill the Graveward again. The initial trip to this boss is extremely fast, as you will spawn just feet from the entrance to his arena. So even though I'm placing this at number three, please know that this farm is exceptional and could just as easily be number two. And that brings us to... Number two! Number two, the Agonizer 9000. Now the Agonizer 9000 is a fast and easy fight with the right gear and build, just like Graveward is. The initial run to this area does take about a minute and a half, but you can literally run past every enemy on the way. Once you're there, you will spawn at the entrance to his arena every time. There's also an ammo machine to quickly restock and sell junk that you pick up from the farm. Agonizer is very generous with the loot, having given me what I believe might be a world record 10 legendary items in one drop. And with the most recent update, they fixed the loot from being able to fall through his floor, which was a problem previously. Additionally, he has a very good dedicated legendary loot pool consisting of the Dictator AR, which is possibly one of the most powerful weapons in the game, the White Elephant and Loaded Dice artifacts, the Agonizer 1500 launcher, and the EMP5 SMG that can only drop on Mayhem 4. 
Now, Agonizer also drops a lot of random cosmetics for anybody that's looking to complete their collections. So between the sheer number of items that he drops and the quality of his dedicated loot, the speed at which you can farm him, I place this farm ever so slightly ahead of Grave Word. Honorable mention. For our honorable mention, the Malawan takedown and Wotan specifically. The entirety of the takedown from the Kraken to the Valkyrie squad to Wotan and every badass in between can yield a good 30 plus legendary items per run but it is a very difficult thing for most players to do solo. So I'm leaving it as an honorable mention, at least until they scale it to be based on the number of players doing the run, and even then, we don't know how that will affect the loot drops. That said, Wotan and the Valkyrie squad can drop a lot of very cool items, like the Redistributor, for example. Wotan can also drop a lot of really highly sought after Mayhem 4 exclusive items like the EMP5, the Spiritual Driver, and even without Mayhem 4, you can find some amazing items like the Kib's Worth, Moonfire Pistol, and the Tig's Boom Shotgun, amongst many many more and of course there's just a general loot explosion of gear after beating wotan and in there i've gotten several very good anointed items so make sure you guys dig carefully through that loot pool a bonus honorable mention goes to the entirety of the new handsome jackpot dlc but most especially to freddy who you can farm for a lot of random loot and then fast travel back to the save station at the beginning of his area and re-farm him over and over without even having to save and quit, making this an ideal farm for console players. But since it's a DLC, I left it out of the main list since I know some players might not own that, but you really should consider buying it as the loot flows like water in that DLC. And finally, here we are at number one! Finally, coming in at number one is the Slaughter Shaft. Now, I know this one might be a tad bit controversial considering what I just said about the honorable mention, but I know not everybody can solo the Slaughter Shaft on Mayhem 4, but hear me out. Just doing this, even on just true Vault Hunter mode, without any Mayhem difficulty at all, will result in a large number of legendary drops. Since this arena is full of badass enemies and they tend to world drop legendary loot very often. Usually by the third round I have maybe 10 legendary items on the ground doing solo mayhem 4, but by the end there's usually upwards of 40 to 50 legendary items scattered around the arena. I have personally gotten numerous pieces of gear to help all of my builds by doing the slaughter shaft. If you do have trouble soloing it then by all means hop onto my discord via the link in the description and post in the LFG section that is relevant to you, looking for other players to team up with. A side note about this farm, the final boss, Mr. Titan, can drop several dedicated legendary drops, including the Tina's Hippity Hopper Grenade, the Shred of Fire, the Butcher, and a Mayhem 4 exclusive, the Zitsev's Eruption AR. There is also a rare chest that will spawn after defeating him, so make sure you grab that as well. Now, the reason that I chose the Slaughter Shaft and not the Slaughter Star or the Cistern of Slaughter is that generally by the end of those, you have maybe 5 to 10 legendary drops on Mayhem 4. So even though you can get a Maggie or a Liuta from the Cistern boss or a Lucian's Call or a Rowan's Call from the Slaughter Star boss, those farms are generally just not as lucrative as a whole. Also, the reason I put the Slaughter Shaft ahead of, say, Grave Word and Agonizer 9000 is because once you're loaded in there, you can just kill wave after wave and you don't have to worry about saving and quitting. And I know a lot of console players watching my videos, and I know that you guys are having a heck of a time right now with load times for saving and quitting. So I wanted to give you guys something that was just a really good source for legendary loot where you didn't really have to stress about it. So that's my top five legendary item farms in Borderlands 3. If you enjoyed this video, then please take a second to hit that like button and hit subscribe if this is your first time here. Let me know in the comment section down below what's your favorite farm in this game. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.